Thank you very much, Dr. Hong. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd also like to thank the leaders and uh, people responsible for APSIS for inviting me here today. I'd like to talk about an implantable wireless pulmonary artery hemodynamic monitoring system for the treatment of class three congestive heart failure. As Dr. Hankins has elucidated at the beginning of her talk, heart failure is a growing global concern. Heart failure in the United States, the prevalence is projected to increase 46% from now until 2030, resulting in over 8 million people over the age of 18 with the diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Heart failure is associated with a high hospitalization readmission rates. So there's about a 25% all-cause readmission within 30 days and 50% admission readmission rate within six months. This is a concern because the patients that have rehospitalization, that's a strong predictor of mortality. So as the incidence of readmission goes up, the mortality also increases. This is an economic burden in the United States and worldwide, since with re readmission, the cost of uh, therapy continues to increase dramatically. This is a picture of Philadelphia, where our hospital is located. The art museum's right in the center, and then what's called Center City Philadelphia is in the background. As you know, in congestive heart failure, an increase in pulmonary arterial pressure starts the worsening of congestive heart failure. If you want to try to decrease the readmission rate, if you can identify an increase in pulmonary artery pressure, that can be an indicator that the patient's on the road to readmission. This slide shows that at the beginning, 30 days before readmission, the patient could be hemodynamically stable, begins to decompensate, the filling pressure increases, autonomic adaptation occurs, intrathoracic impedance increases, then weight change, and then symptoms. So you can see why some of the studies show that weight changes don't decrease readmission, because it's already too late, and that if you can start early on by identifying a change in filling pressure, possibly that can decrease readmission rates. One way to do that is to implant a wireless permanent pulmonary arterial measuring system, and that's what I'll talk about today. The name of the system is called CardioMEMS Heart Failure System. It's manufactured by St. Jude Medical Center. It consists of a small uh, pulmonary artery pressure sensor that we implant in the pulmonary artery, a patient electronic system, which is a pillow that the patient lies on that transmits the pressure to a radio frequency signal that then can be measured and is seen on a website by the physicians in the hospital system. The device is a 15 millimeter long sensor that's two millimeters uh, thick, 3.4 millimeters wide. There are two nitinol fixation devices that are 10 millimeters on each side. And it's implanted in the posterior inferior pulmonary artery, ideally on the left side, because that would be the closest to the transmitter in the pillow. A clinical trial showing the efficacy of this device was called the CHAMPION trial, published in Lancet in 2011. And this is how the trial was done. Approximately 550 patients with uh, class three congestive heart failure for at least three months, irrespective of the left ventricular ejection fraction, were enrolled. They were randomized between uh, having the sensor placed and turned on versus those that had the sensor placed but not turned on, and the patients were then treated and followed up for six months. The goal of therapy was a PA pressure of 15 to 35, diastolic 8 to 20, and a mean pressure of 10 to 25. This is what the data looks like. There's the waveform and the actual pressure. Here's the sensor. This is the angiogram of the pulmonary artery. The patient lies on the pillow to transmit the pressure to the physicians in the clinic on the website. The patients were typical for class three congestive heart failure. The age was about 60, 70% uh, were men, 
73% were Caucasian, the rest were minorities. Uh, coronary artery disease was the most common cause of the congestive heart failure, and they were all well treated with typical medical therapy for congestive heart failure. And this was the primary endpoint. Uh, statistically significant, and I think clinically relevant reduction in rehospital admission within six months here, that then was very durable and in fact expanded out to 90 days after the implant. So a statistically significant reduction in rehospitalization by using the uh, PA pressure guided therapy versus traditional ways to determine decompensation of heart failure. Other endpoints were also pos uh, positive. There was a reduction here on the bottom line of quality of life. Quality of life was improved with the cardio MEMS versus standard of care, and so was uh, mortality. Safety endpoints, there were no pressure sensor failures, and there was a very small incidence, 1% of device-related or system-related complications. The benefit was regardless whether it was uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction versus heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, both groups had a reduction in uh, rehospitalization. So summary of the CHAMPION trial was that you could uh, accurately measure uh, pulmonary arterial pressures. Medications can be changed based on the changes in the pulmonary artery pressures. There was a reduction in the PA pressure by using the, uh, the uh, cardio MEMS data, reduction in heart failure hospitalizations, and improvement in patients' quality of life. Another picture of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is the city is nestled between two rivers. This is the Schuylkill River. On the other side is the Delaware River. They drain into the Delaware Bay and onto the Atlantic Ocean. So how do we put in the uh, cardio MEMS device? We do aim for the posterior, inferior, on the left side pulmonary uh, artery. And there's no active fixation. The uh, pressure, uh, compression of the pressure sensor uh, can create a frequency which then can be uh, transmitted. So there's no implantable uh, battery source. This is what the device looks like. It's non-thrombogenic, stable, and very reliable. The device comes crimped on a delivery catheter fixed with a wire, and I'll show you how it's implanted in the next few slides. This is one of our most famous landmarks in Philadelphia. It's the Liberty Bell rung when the Declaration of Independence was first read to the uh, people. This was an animation, but I can't seem to get it to work here. It showed the device, so I'll go through it with some separate slides. We have an 11 or 12 French sheath that we place in the right common femoral vein. We put a Swangans catheter into the left side. We put it in a wedge position. We measure the pressures. We then do a hand injection pulmonary arterial angiogram locate uh, an appropriately sized uh, inferior posterior pulmonary artery. We then place a 0.018 inch in diameter wire through the Swangans catheter into the pulmonary artery, take out the Swangans catheter, and put the cardio MEMS uh, deployment system over that wire, uh, and then release it with our wire system. This is what it looks like. This is a picture of our hospital. The Drexel University College of Medicine uses Hahnemann University Hospital as our teaching hospital right in Center City, Philadelphia. Here's an example of a case that we used. We had a 64-year-old man with a history of ischemic cardiomyopathy, ejection fraction of 31%. He had two episodes of worsening, shortness of breath, exertion, orthopnea, class three New York Heart Association. He was perfect for the cardio MEMS device. We put in a Swan-Gans catheter here. We do an angiogram. Here's the posterior inferior pulmonary artery. We put a 018 wire through the uh, catheter We've into the pulmonary artery. That's our target. We take out the Swan-Gans catheter, leaving the wire in place. Here comes the CardioMEMS deployment system. This is what the device looks like angiographically. We put it in place. We remove the wire and then we release the device from its delivery system. And here's what the device looks like here with the wires all out. This is what the patient's lying on. This is the pillow with the sensors.
to transmit the pressure into a radio frequency uh, center a signal. And then this is what the CardioMEMS looks like angiographically. We've had good results with it at our medical center and look forward to expanding its use. And if anyone's interested, I do have a poster tomorrow for the first time using the CardioMEMS center in a patient with a uh, heart failure secondary to congenital heart disease. This is uh, uh, Independence Hall, one of the most famous tourist sites in Philadelphia. Thank you very much for your attention.